Just so you know, we now have more bigger issues on ground to discuss and to take the right action before it is too late. Just recently, according to the Zara reporters, as of Reb 6, 10-year prison sentence and 5 million naira fine for Nigerians who refuse to recite the national anthem. And guess what? That is not all. In fact, there is more. And that has caused a lot of reactions. According to the proposed legislation, anyone found guilty of refusing to recite the new national anthem shall be fined 5 million naira or face a 10-year prison sentence or even but um, more things are happening and as you can see we are now moving towards another direction entirely they are about to pass this new bill and according to what someone said pels on x the person said undermine the federal government five million era fine or 10 years in prison or both just like i said earlier illegal roadblocks two million era or five years in prison or both <laughs> things are happening and if you refuse to sing the new national anthem, 5 million naira or 10 years in prison, or you have to face both, and that is if you refuse to recite the national anthem. In fact, protest is now 5 years in prison. So probably what they are trying to do is that no more protest in this country. In fact, even if you want to do peaceful protest, <laughs> that means 5 million naira or 5 years in prison. And that is not what we should be discussing. No bill. To end sufferings in this country the only bit they are trying to pass now is that if you refuse to recite the national anthem or if you want to go for protest you are going to be fine or if you may receive prison sentence this is not happening in this country because it's as if our leaders don't even care about animals they are only concerned about their own safety and i don't understand what they are trying to protect they should be protecting the citizens imagine you no know, trying to pass down this bill because of the afraid of the people coming out to Tell them the truth that we don't want this to continue. Imagine coming out to pass this kind of bill. And this is what someone else had to say. According to the person, the person actually break it down. If you hold Tinubu accountable for being a failure, you will do two years in prison and you will be fined four million naira. That is another one. That is if you should go on maybe social media or anyway, uh, holding President Tinubu accountable for the sufferings the people are experiencing, <laughs> you are going to be fined four million naira or you are going to spend two years in prison now another one if you question your imams or clerics or even the traditional and religious rulers you will do two years in jail and also be fined four million naira <laughs> these people they don't want us to breathe anymore number three if you protest against bad governors you will do 10 years in prison and you will pay five million naira just like they just concluded peaceful protests and bad governors they are trying to bring this up because some protesters i mean some nigerian youths are saying that they are going to continue this nationwide protest i mean probably that is one of the reasons why the you know as of reps are trying to pass down this bill to scare the people or what i don't even understand and the four is that if you sponsor any protest in nigeria or you receive money to sponsor protest you will do 20 years in jail and be fined 50 million era. Why? I mean, that is the question we should be asking ourselves. Why? Why are they trying to pass down this bill? For what? What are they trying to achieve? And just like I said from the beginning of this video, this is one of the more bigger issues that we need to discuss and we need to take the right action before it is too late. So as you can see, what they are trying to do is that if you want to protest in this country you are going to be fined five millionaire or four millionaire or you are going to you know receive prison sentence and some other things if you hold president in the accountable for the bad i mean for the failures happening in this country or for any bad governance you are going to be fined and be sent to prison <laughs> i mean i don't know who they are trying to scare but recently there's another ongoing issue that we need to you know focus on that is the cng boss because people are saying that fine this is actually a good move, but this is not the right time to bring these kind of buses because there are some other things that we can put, I mean, we should focus on because this particular bus, it has a lot of side effects that we need to, you know, take proper measure before we approve or we allow this particular bus to be used for, you know, public transportation. Actually, someone was, you know, invited uh, to the morning show on Arise News to share his particular opinion regarding this so take a listen and let us know what you think about it in the comments don't forget to like this video so that youtube can recommend it and also share your genuine opinion 
regarding the new bill that they want to pass, what the President Bola made to the book for being a failure, you are going to be fined with four million naira and two years in prison. And if you protest, four million naira fine and ten years in prison. So I want you to take a listen to what this man has to say first before we know if this is what we want or not. And I'll be right back. Welcome back to the morning show right here on the Rise News Channel. President Bola Tinubu has inaugurated 30 compressed natural gas bus powered buses at the State House. Abuja aimed to ease the burden of transportation on citizens brought about by the removal of fuel subsidy. This was as the chairman of Depots and Petroleum Product Markets Association of Nigeria, Winifred Akbani, described the formal unveiling of the buses as a game changer for the transport sector. Tinubu has assured that the buses will help ease transportation challenges faced by Nigerians, especially in the federal capital territory. At the symbolic ceremony performed at the State House, Abuja, Tinubu disclosed that the commercial vehicles in Nigeria will make up about 80% of the nation's petroleum consumption, costing the country trillions of naira monthly. However, some Nigerians are having a different view towards the CNG project. They say the world is shifting away from fossil fuel. So joining us now on the show to share his views on the federal government compressed natural gas CNG powered vehicles in Nigeria is Air Vice Marshal Akube Yamu. Uh, Air Vice Marshal Akube Yamu is a climate change expert, president, environmental protection and climate change practitioner, former acting director general, National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. Great to have you, sir, on the show. Sir, can you start, you know, by telling us how viable is this CNG going to be in Nigeria? Because the concern has always been the major investment to even get it available in the first place. How viable do you think it's going to be? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rufai. Thank you, Ayo, and thank you, Vibai. Let me appreciate the good work you are doing. For viability, you had the lady who spoke there said, though we are not there yet, we're, we're, we're going there. But you see, there's a very strong nexus between energy and transportation in national security. That is why every nation creates a broader effort to continue to search for effective and efficient way to be able to shore up its own energy base. Now, you, ha you have here in, in, in Nigeria, who has the largest amount of gas in sub-Saharan Africa, and the largest amount of fossil fuel, sorry, second largest fossil fuel after Libya. Now, what are, what are we going to do? You, you also live in, a, in Africa where you have 640 million people have no access to electricity and 970 million people have no uh, access to gas. What are we going to do? What is, what is CNG in the first place? You are just going to take your, your gas, which is propane, sorry, butane, and compress it to 1% of its volume. Now, is it viable? The answer is yes and no. Is it very effective? Yes, but that is the cheapest source now. If you have to transit, notice the word there, transition. Every part of the globe now is on a transition phase. Some are up, some are very far, some are starting, and some, some are just beginning to move. After COP28, the need for transition became very, very impending for countries to move in that direction. But African and countries like Nigeria are arguing that, look, you people have moved very far. Why not allow us to use the fossil fuel that we have to develop? To develop in such a way that we'll be able to get enough money to be able to transit. CNG is not a new technology. It has been with us since World War I, 1914, when the Allied forces were being challenged. Then that is when they developed the CNG. Countries are using it, Pakistan and uh, uh, Iran. Iran is the, is the country with the highest number of CNG cars, 4 million. So it is very viable if we, if we are able to mainstream the technology and the finances. The finances, that is very, very important. That is very, very important. So for now, the way we are, don't forget, in 2020, the, the, the natural gas expansion program was launched. The former president said we're going to make one million, one million cars, we're going to convert them, fit and retrofit. Then in 2021, again, the, uh, the Nigerian gas uh, pro, uh, program was also, was also commissioned. So these have been the broader effort to be able to do it. But 
the world is not moving in the direction of CNG. They are moving in the direction of uh, uh, renewable energy and alternative energy. Alternative energy. So I believe that if we, are, if we are moving in this traditional phase, our greater focus should be on the renewable energy because Africa is less than 5% penetration. Less than 5% penetration. And we have all the resources here. Our lithium is almost about 1 trillion US dollars unexplored. So I believe we, th that, is the, that is the way to go, yeah. All right, so I, I hear you in terms of the way to go, but if you look at the reason why the um, government is opting for CNG buses, is what you highlighted already, sir, which is cost. The immediate concern of Nigerians is the cost of transportation, which CNG buses are supposed to plug. If you're saying EV, yes, I hear you that EV is the, you know, where the world is moving towards, but let's analyze that against cost to Nigerians and the availability of power, you know, to, to power the vehicles. Are we ready for that? See, we should not weave our policy around our inadequacies and constraints. No, we must have a moonshot. We must have a moonshot. If we don't have a moonshot, we will never be able to go. But the interesting aspect of it, like I said, you see, the, the uh, PICNGs, they, they said that, look, they will be able to bring transport fare down by 60%. That's okay, you can do that. But you see, if you are doing that, like I said in my earlier statement, there's a very strong nexus between energy and transportation, which has to do, you, you already, you have inflation, which is 34.19. That's the headline inflation. And in headline inflation, you have 50% of it being dominated by food. So if we, if this one can do that, but it is cheap, it is environmentally friendly, both of them, are, are very consequential. If it is cheap, now if you if you compare apple by apple, a stretch of a hundred kilometers, you are you are going to have the CNG cheaper, far cheaper than the the, 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 the petrol. But being environmentally again to anything that is cheap has consequences. Has consequences. One, the pressure. Two, fire. Fire. The three. Health concerns, safety concerns, safety concerns. Now, you know, CAG, where you break down the gas, like I said, it's gas complete, comp compressed to about 1% of its original uh, 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 volume, unlike propane, which is, which is just liquid. When you compress it to that uh, uh, volume and you are burning it, you are going to have nanocarbon. Nanocarbon. And what's nanocarbon? is very, very consequential in cancer. So if we are looking at the cheapness, we should also be getting the technology to look at all these other, uh, uh, other areas. Again, too, they said, look, the kit is, according to PICNG, uh, between 300 and 600,000, uh, uh, you know, with, 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 the, with the contending uh, 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 national issues now. Well, what, 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 uh, why are you going to, are you going to do that? If you bring it down, now there is no way we will not go in the direction of the electric vehicle. And to say that fuel will go back to the original price, that is a fallen, fallen thought. Because if you have a weak currency and it's not stable, you, are, you, you I mean, you already have two whammy issues. Whammy issue. Because as your currency is going down, you are going to be scouting for volume of Naira to go and purchase the fuel. To go and purchase the fuel, and what are you doing? You are you, you are you are seriously attacking your foreign reserve. So, if if you go for a broader a, a broader effort that will do this, then it's all okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, your, your responses are extremely informative. Now, I know it, when the uh, reveal yesterday of those vehicles was made by the presidency, there was a reference made to India and how much, uh, how much inroads India has made with regards to CNG-powered vehicles, especially in the tra public transport sector. However, when we look at India, their plan was to uh, become a gas-backed economy by 2030. They're struggling to do so, and they seem 
seeing a reduction in the in the consumption of CNG uh, and for a number of reasons. However, there the trend has been that although there's a progressive policy, they're not seeing corresponding factors with regards to production trends and consumption trends. So my question to you is, when you look at the current state of the nation and you know where we're going with regards to our short-term and medium-term plans, the policy says one thing, but do you feel the environment is indicating a readiness for uh, implementation of CNG transportation? Yes, like I said before, I said it's environmentally friendly but it also has a head uh, consequence. Take, for example, the whole of EU. EU is, is, is just about 1%, apart from Italy. Just about 1%. Now, if you, if, if, if you look at it, environmental friendliness, yes, it's environmental friendly. It's a transition gas. That It is Sorry, not the ultimate. Sir, if, if I may just interject. Please, mark I, that word. I, I just meant the business environment and the operational environment. You mean the business environment? Yes, and the operational environment for production and for consumption. Yeah, for the business environment, for the environment, business environment, they've told us that look, we are going to we are going to warehouse about two billion and two hundred and fifty uh, thousand uh, uh, jobs. That's very very enticing. That's very very enticing. But for the environment, for a nation that that is that is on the race, we said okay. Uh, in, in 2021, the former president said, look, he signed the climate change law. Now we said we're going to do 20% of NDC, national, nationally determined carbon, unaided. And we're going to do 40% We will need international help. If you are moving in the direction, what bank has advised us that we should use all available means to bring in dollars to our, to our foreign reserve? Is that what we are looking for? The debt for nation finance is there. We, but they, this, these monies are not given just because you ask for it. There must be a conscious effort. So I, I believe that CNG is in that way. But for me, I still believe that the, the, the electric vehicle should have been the way to go. If you go for this uh, plant in uh, Aba, the cost was just 800 million. If you, if you, if you just oppose that into what we are spending there, I believe that we should be having that. And again, too, we are not looking at the infrastructure, infrastructure to, to mainstream uh, uh, CNG into people's houses. You, b before you came from your, your house to your office, how many CNG points did you see? So those are, those are the, 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 okay. the things. So, it, 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 it is potential, like the PICNG have said, yeah. So let's even talk about the availability and i'm happy you talked about the fact that you don't have enough stations the gas we have here is still a problem because we have it in abundance but we've not been able to tap for cooking how are we sure that we are now able to tap for cng where we've not been able to effectively meet our local demand for cooking and we have gas very very brilliant question uh, rufai you see our gas and uh, fossil fuel have been one of the most expensive in the world. Like, I, before I came in, I was reading a, uh, development. And if, if we must take it out, there must be massive investment. And if all these people are all going out, the IOCs and all, where we should be able to assess would you be able to access a, a fund to be able to, to develop it? Now, the future survivability of CNG, why the, why the that part of the world is not using is availability of gas. Like I said, we are the most endowed gas in sub-Saharan Africa, but infrastructure is our challenges. Started. It, it, that would have been a... a an avenue for us to have forgotten whether they were even going to be cash trapped or not. Country like Algeria, cash trapped in it. We, you know, if you check the last one year, due to gas, you see that Algeria has increased their military spending from 7.1 billion to about 21 billion, all coming from, 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 from gas. So to ask to, to, to come to that, we need to develop our infrastructure. Don't forget, 
the former president promised 100, uh, sorry, 1 million vehicles. And now we are delivering 30. I think NPC will add 10, making it uh, 40. That is a far, far cry from to, to ameliorate the, the challenges that we are having now. Gas is available, but you must ask the gas, <laughs> can, you, can you explore yourself? The answer is no. The answer is no. And the, 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 the National uh, 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 Gas Development Policy says that, look, we are developing it first of all to be able to bring gas into the homes of everybody and to be able to make it available for industrialization. I think last year, out of the 3 million metric tons, what were we able to do? I think 1.6 or 1.7, that's, that's, that's a, a gas in the house. You understand? So the potential, we should, we should start turning potentials into reality. You start turning potential into reality. Mozambique, that just moved into the gas environment now, what did they do? They are privatizing their, uh, 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 their gas by calling it the UAE to come and buy about 20% inside. That is another area. We must open up our, uh, our hydrocarbon. We must open up NNPC. We must open it up like yesterday. Like Adnok, Petrobras, and, the, uh, and every other uh, international oil opening. We must open up NNPC. Get investment inside so that we will be able to know the direction that we are going to and benefit from it the way the world is benefiting from their own oil. All right. Thank you so much, sir. I, I don't think I've been able to get clarity with regards to the first question I asked you as to how ready is Nigeria for EV What was that? How ready are we in Nigeria for EV vehicles? I say this because even with CNG buses or CNG, we've talked about the need for, um, you know, conversion kits, for charging stations, for refueling stations or regassing stations, if I put it that way. But for EVs, for instance, I asked about the availability of the electricity to power these vehicles, affordability. Um, are we ready for that at the moment? I, know, I hear you and I agree with you that we can have them side by side operating at the same time, especially if we're looking at where the world, the rest of the world is going to EV. But are we ready for it now? Or should we understand the peculiarity of our needs and focus on CNG and then maybe later whilst we are making plans for EVs? <laughs> the world will never wait for you. I was reading, the minister was in Calabar, minister of uh, power. See, look, the minister should stop sound bites. Tell us policies, direction. Where are we going with, with the power? You're telling us that, okay, uh, 5,100 megawatts is what we are having now. We had that one in 1980. When, uh, uh, was it Egbe? So the, 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 the one in Delta was, was commissioned. That's when we had that. He said we're going to have 6,000 by this year. Stop sandbag. Give us the moonshot for, for, for electricity, for electric vehicle. Now, you see, like I told you, the lithium, the lithium which is one of the uh, uh, fundamental materials for, 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 for renewable energy and electric vehicle, is present here. And 30%, you, you saw when uh, uh, Korea, South Korea, had to hold a meeting of Africa. 30% of what is required for electric vehicle is here. And in Nigeria, we have one trillion under the ground. One trillion under the ground to do that. So it, it is not whether we are ready. We must generate the internal energy, like every other person has done, to be able to go in the direction of this electric uh, vehicle. We have, we have people, genesis everywhere, uh, having sand bites. I think one in uh, Lokoja, another one in uh, Meduguri. Look, the, 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 content, the content development policy should bring these people together. Bring, see, nation develop if you, if you head on and exploit the resources of your citizens. It's very important. And above all, head on for people that can drive this policy for you. Let's move it out from proclivities for, 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 for primordial sentiments. And no, no. We, now that we are now, we have to look for, we have to head on for capacity and capabilities. Like yesterday, it's very, very important. It's, it's very important. You know, earlier you made reference to renewable energy. I'm curious to you, uh, especially as we've just been talking about the power sector and so forth, why do you think that Nigeria is not showing a strong appetite for renewable energy? If you look at the breakdown of our primary energy basket, renewable energy is still accounting for less than 1% of the power that Nigeria uses. Why do you think that's the case? Now, I was very generous to say less than 5%. I didn't want to say 1%. Now, you see, for, for renewable energy, you must create 
the direction. You must create the, 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 the enabling environment. And you must put cap uh, capability there. Now, let me just give you an example of, uh, of, of Singapore. Singapore was a rural, a rural uh, community, a fishing, a fishing community by 1965. As today, their, 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 their GDP, uh, sorry, per capita income is 88,000 US dollars. What did they do? See, you must, you must, government must, you see, government have no part in business. Who create the environment? Government have business in business. A business in business. Our, our agencies, Nasenin and all, they should be looking at that direction. We are also carried away with uh, uh, CNG. Is, uh, uh, everybody is talking about CNG. 30 vehicles? No. <laughs> The new, the new open energy with the amount of lithium we have here. And again, to look, our, our Ministry of Solid Mineral needs attention, needs to be given attention. 40 plus minerals under the ground. And most of them are the material for renewable energy. So we need to move in that direction. But sir, we already have local manufacturers of what's it called cars now, uh, battery-powered cars like Saglev. Why is it that the government is not giving them a lot of support? Saglev is just in the Kurudu here. They manufacture battery cars, cleanest of energy. Why is that we're not giving them support? Uh, this other, uh, uh, you know, Chinese people that bring uh, also cars into Nigeria, you know, they have a particular, you know, uh, battery-powered car brand they have. Why are they not give what? I'm particular about Saglev. If there, there might be other many manufacturers of lithium battery powered cars, but I know of Saglev in the Kurodu. Why are they not giving people like that support? Why are we not having government officials saying Saglev, bring some of your cars for government para startups? Why are we not doing that? Because it's not for the want of not having the technology. We have them on ground. See, industrial complex. It is not magic. It's the effort, like you have just mentioned, um, bringing them all together. Bring it, one could be in Meduguri, one could be in Lagos. One could, they don't need to be all, a, a, all in a place. You, what do you do? You harness and mainstream all their, all their, their, their genesis and put them and put them together. I give you a joke. A Nigeria went to buy a car, an electric vehicle car. So when they told him the price. He said, oh, this price is very, is very, very uh, uh, high. Okay, the, 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 the seller told the, he told the person that, you know what, we are going to service the vehicle for you for, for uh, a year, and we are going to uh, make sure that we service it continuously. He said, okay, 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 okay. Can, do you service electric vehicle? And the answer is no, you don't service electric vehicle. It's a one of things. See, our university by now, the policy, you see, the world as of today is 21% into renewable energy. So our policy as of today, educational policy, should move into that direction. I saw some children the other day from China already play with uh, diodes and everything. We are still drawing map of uh, Amoeba and everything here. Our educational policy de deliberately and intentionally should move in that direction. Mm. We are not, we are not getting money from the, 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 the environmental uh, 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 funding at all, because we're not moving in that direction. And you see, hand over the environmental management to experts. Remove it from politics. Everything must not be in politics. Remove it from politics and hand it over to experts. Get, get hand it over to experts. Let's see, we, 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 have, we have Nigerians who are experts all over the world, a name that we will we, we be able to give stamp to your to your uh, renewable energy effort bring them in bring them in so once politics is over governance takes the center stage but, but why is that it doesn't work i'll give you an instance Delilah liu was the designer of chevy votes general motors you know uh ev but he has been brought to the automotive sector in nigeria we've not had as much big invention like we expect with this profile in America. What's really going on? See, see, we, see like I said before, industrial complexes are not magic. They are not, uh, they are not clairvoyant. It is the government that bring them together. Bring them together. See, 
as we are having as we are having shots from across Nigeria, bring them all together. What do you have? What do you have? That's why Naseni was set up. Naseni interface with these people. Let them come in and let us drive this electric vehicle. Now, the 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 the, the 21% in the world, and we're having less than one percent. One percent. That is not encouraging at all. You cannot draw environmental advantage by that abysmal, abysmal uh, 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 figure at all. Countries are drawing from debt to nation finance a lot, a lot. So what we need now is that government must get involved in business. They must get involved. They must, they must create the internal energy of people. You, you must governize them, governize them and make sure and give them a direction to say, this is where we are going. This is the national policy on EV. Do you, okay, do you know the national policy on EV? The question is, does it, ex does it exist, sir? I, I don't, don't do, does, do we have a policy on EV? <laughs> I believe that the main focus has been on CNG <laughs> buses. And even at that, you cited the national gas expansion project since 2021. We don't know how far that has gone in terms of yes. um, you know, um, implementation or actualization of that plan. So a number of things, you know, as you rightly said, that first of all, let's start from a a pl let's have a plan, a national plan with regards to this, which I don't think exists at the moment. And I'm glad that you're also making a case for EV alongside CNG um, um, buses, even though, you know, when we compare in terms of emissions, um, costs, about the same thing. But the most important thing is the impact on the Nigerian people in terms of people who use buses. But realistically, sir, as we begin to round off, for commercial purposes, because that's the first area that the, that the government is looking at, can EVs work? Would EVs work? I say this because the charging stations, the battery life, the number of commuters who currently use um, public transportation in Nigeria, can it work? for? Because it's, it's not really the people who have private cars who are focusing on an immediate. In terms of the fuel subsidy removal, alleviating the costs, you know, or the, or the impact on people, it would be mass transit we're looking at. Can EV feed that? EV will work. EV, did you say EV or CNG? Which one? EV. CNG buses are already been there. I mean, we have okay. 40 currently. But EV buses, okay. yes. In term, and based on the Nigerian context, not the ideal. EV buses for okay. mass transit. Okay. EV... EV will work if we fight for it. We must fight for it. Now, the, 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 you see, we must continue, like I said before, let's not weave policies around our inadequacies. No, we must have a moonshot. For EV, Nigeria need a moonshot. We must, we must, we must go for it. Develop our electricity. Develop our electricity. I give you an example. In France now, you don't you don't stop on a, char a charging point to charge now. It's a four kilometer stretch. As you are coming, you just drive through it. When you are driving through it, your vehicle is being charged. If we can get eight hundred uh, 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 million dollar facility in a bad electricity, that means it is possible. And with 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 the with the the, the opening up of the electricity sector, let's get the states involved. Let's get them involved. Like that's I said, why I asked for the, before, sorry, sorry, sir. That's EV what, will work. Sir, that's why I asked for the Nigerian context. The ideal situation is what you have described in France. But we're still battling the challenge of powering our homes, businesses, houses with electricity. So it's dependent on having a robust infrastructure for electricity. And that's why I'm asking that question as to the practicality of it currently. I agree with you that in the long term, let's look into it. But the practicality of it currently is what I'm saying. And maybe to expand that question, I'll say what infrastructure ought to be on ground right now? If we say power, I think a number of Nigerians would be pessimistic about that because we're still, we've been trying to solve the, um, the problem of power for so many years. So how would that change because of EV mass transit buses? You see, Nigeria is not in this state because of resources. Now, the, the, the amount of sunshine you have in a year is very, very tremendous. The amount of, you have the two, one of the two largest rivers in Africa, in Africa. So, you, like I said, the, your lithium is almost one trillion. So, 
if what is what is EV is the batteries, the lithium batteries. That's what you're talking about. If we can partner with, say, countries like South Korea, which have their, their eyes on Africa, because 30% of the material is coming out from here. It's coming out from but, here. But, so we must, we, must, we must create, yes. But it's, as we wrap up, because we're wrapping up now, in fact, I was told that once you learn, we should wrap up, but yeah. it's easier said than done. And I'll give you a quick instance, sir. China had to subsidize BYD with $1 billion dollars every year in fact at a point that was the only profit that was coming in before they stabilized and now they are the biggest you know ev producer in the world do you think our government has that kind of capacity as we speak now so it's easier said than done. the missing link is not only the lithium it's the money we don't have that resource on ground we don't you see you finance what is your priority you finance what is your priority you understand if 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 we if we block see uh the the the, the borrowing the other the other day the eu what did they tell us they say look you have you have enough money you just go back go and fix accountability and transparency problem you have a whole lot of money now if you do that look at the look at the governor and bring that money and create priorities it's about priorities you will have money for what is a priority to you okay thank you so much i really appreciate you well that is the update thanks for staying connected and watching the full video well so let us know what you think about it in the comments regarding what the man no i said everything said was actually spot on it made a lot of senses and you know that's one thing that we need to be you know we need to be passing the right information we need to let the people know what exactly is going on in this country i mean not like we should just be looking for a way to know fine we know the states of the country but at the same time before we decide or whether this is what we want or not we need to take you no know, proper measures if it is actually for you know for the uh for the benefit uh, for the benefits of the people so according to what the man said uh regarding to everything relating to the cng buses fine we know that this cng buses is just like another you know innovative and president Tinubu has promised to bring these buses you no know, for how many years now? I think close to two years. <laughs> and probably he used to watch Arise News because Hosseini Rufai has been mentioning these particular buses in, in every interviews. You know, in every interviews, he has been mentioned that when is President Bola Metinobu is going to bring these buses. And as you can see, we now have 40 out of 50. And that is actually a very smart move from the federal government. But at the same time, too. This particular bus, there are a lot of side effects. Fine, it is going to, you know, maybe reduce costs. But just like the man has said, these are the things that we need to consider first. So let us know what you think about it in the comment. And regarding to the pass, uh, regarding to the bill that they want to pass, that if you protest, that is 10 years in prison and you are going to pay 5 million naira fine or 4 million naira. And the other thing is that if you hold President Tinubu accountable for being a failure, and the sufferings and ships the people are facing in this country you are going to um be sent to prison for two years and you are going to pay four million naira fine and that is not all if you insult your clerics imams any religious leaders for anything you just like the same to same fine or go to prison so those are the things that we need to discuss we need to share our genuine opinion if it actually concerns us and that's it is concerns us even if we are not trying to do it because of ourselves we need to consider our loved ones yeah because it is going to affect in one way or the other so let us know what you think about it in the comments and don't forget to like and share this video to other different platforms and in case you are yet to subscribe do well to subscribe today and make sure you turn on the notification bell so they stay notified thanks for watching